Hey YouTube, I have never ever made a eulogy for Yecheskel Yisochar ben Miriam. You wrote in rejecting the video that I had already made a duplicate of this. I have never made a eulogy over Yecheskel Yisochar ben Miriam, very simply because he just died. So therefore, someone, you, or someone has tampered with my sight, and I'm not happy with it. And I will share the, the video on Facebook so people will know that somebody in YouTube has either hacked YouTube site or that YouTube itself does not like these religious videos. My uncle Yecheska Yisachar ben Miriam was a man of great heart, love, and action. I don't recall him ever ceasing doing things, helping people. Never saw him relaxed just to enjoy himself. His entire world was composed of doing things to make the world better, either to earn a living so that he could raise his family in a proper way, or to care for others, or to study God's Torah. I never saw him waste time. He was not a person who would listen to the radio, television didn't have. Never stayed on the phone for very long. He built his relationships and let those relationships lasted for 40, 50, 60, and more years. And it was my good fortune to know him these last 62 years. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, 61 years. Since 1957. He was a sincere, devoted Chosid, and he meant what he said. He talked about self-control. He never got angry, never lost his cool, never spoke badly about any other person. And this was not because he studied Lashon Hara from the Chafetz Chaim, because he was taught Chassidus and he thought only good about people. He never thought any bad about people. When he went to a wedding of a non-religious relative, he came and danced, brought his children to make the family happy, brought his own brown bag. He was perfectly happy eating his own kosher food and enjoying seeing the joy of his relatives, despite the fact that they were religiously different. He was a person who enjoyed other people, enjoyed seeing people, enjoyed taking care of people. There was nothing more pleasant to him than doing a favor. And yet in his own personal life, he was not austere, but he never ever gave in to small petty pleasures. His greatest pleasure was meditating on the teachings of Hasidus. And every Shabbos, he did so. During the week, he didn't have the time. But in Shabbos, he'd come home late afternoon, every Shabbos, because that was the time that he set aside to focus on his relationship with his creator. Time was conserved and utilized in the best possible way. He got up at 4.30, he was never asleep before 11.30. This is from the time that I knew him. He had about five hours sleep and he would get a snooze during the day for about 15 minutes. 
and five hours was his maximum. He was always up by 4.30, five o'clock he was working with the chickens, with the turkeys. Later on he made wine and he drew his living from making, from the wine making. For years, for 50 years, he worked with what is called Matan Besesa, the secret society of helping people without fanfare. He helped many, many indigent people, became their personal counselors, and was involved in helping them in any way he could. He studied every day with the, the Rav of Kfar Chabad, and he studied several times he had several kriyas, and each day he had one with his sakrat rifkin. It lasted over 40 years, in which the pictures were plastered all over COL live. And in his personal life, never indulged. The time that I knew him, from the time that he was aware, about 65 years, he never took water from the fridge. The water was from the, the tap. That was as cold as the water would get for him. His tea was never sweetened unless he needed a sweetener. It would be honey, it would not be sugar. But he never indulged in things that were extraneous, things that were necessary, things that were healthy. Those he took, but he never overate. He was trim. He was in good shape physically, always working physically with his body, exceptionally strong. Most importantly, he was a happy person, a person who enjoyed his life and made other people enjoy their lives. No wonder that his kids, not only are normal, but happy and healthy, and their children loved them. The children loved him. His grandchildren loved him. All the people in Kfachabad loved him. Despite the fact that he was not a rabbi, a Rosh Shiva, the village of Kfachabad made him and Velva Kesselman, the co mashpiim the spiritual guides of the community. You have to understand, these Chassidim, these Chassidim will live to a very high standard. What did they see in Chatzkul Springer? They saw Emes, they saw truth, they saw a person who loved people, loved life, yet never indulged. He was a person who enjoyed every aspect of his life, despite the fact he never had much. His house was very simple. Very simple furnishing, very basic furnishings, but everything was wonderful, everything was terrific. He didn't need to have a whole lot of clothing, he didn't need to have a whole lot of stuff, never had a car. He would drive a bicycle all over the village. If he needed to get somewhere, he took a bus or several buses. And he never complained. Even when he was physically hurt or injured, he never ever complained. He always tried to make you feel good and happy and as if you were the most important thing in his life. He told me that he contemplated while he was working on the farm, working with his turkeys, working on, on his, he had a couple of hectares of land where he planted crops, when he was planting or he was working with the, the turkeys, or later on working with his wine making, he contemplated on the teachings of Chassidus and the powers of God in, in, the, in, in the process of creation, and meditated on these things deeply. He taught lessons about divine providence, about the Torah about Yerushalayim, fear of God, and compassion, and love, and caring every week to his children. 
His words were simple, to the point, never condescending, never criticizing, but always teaching a lesson. I miss him already. I haven't seen him in terms of, you know, the relationship we had for about 50 years. I would see him from time to time when I would visit Kfar Chabad in Israel. But the impression he made on me is lasting. For four years, he was my father. He was my God. He was my teacher. And to his family, I say, may you be blessed. May God comfort you along with all who mourn Zion and Jerusalem. And I am sure, just as when he came to see the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1957, Tav Shinchai, and when he realized what it meant to be a chassid of the Rebbe, immediately the Rebbe said, Yechatzkel Yisachar ben Miriam should say l'chaim. At that very moment that he thought this, recognize this, the Rebbe said, you've arrived, say l'chaim. Well, this Friday, he said l'chaim again. Even though his body is no longer alive, he still lives, and he says l'chaim to all of us. <laughs>